All right, so let's talk about the idea of a subgraph. Well, a subgraph is fairly intuitive because it's really what it sounds like it is. It's a graph that exists within another graph. So let's take a look at a couple of examples to see how this might work. So I'm going to draw just some graph. I don't know what I'm going to draw yet. Let me see. Maybe this is vertex V1, V2, V3, and V4. And maybe I have some edges like this like that and maybe one across the middle. So this is my example graph. Now one thing that I could do to sort of modify this graph and make it a smaller graph would be to delete a vertex. So if I do something called vertex deletion, vertex deletion, then it looks exactly like how you would think it would be. Let's say that I decide to delete this vertex right here, V1 then, well, I'm left with vertex V4 and vertex V2 and vertex V3, and they still have the edges that go between them. But when you remove a vertex, like here, when we remove V1, we also have to remove the edges that are incident with V1. Otherwise, we would have these really funny looking lines with no extra end, and every edge has to have two ends. So when you do vertex deletion, you also have to remove all edges associated or incident with that vertex, that vertex as well. So that's important to keep in mind. And now this is the new graph. And we actually have a special notation for that. We write G minus V1 because we've literally removed the vertex V1. All right, well, that's not the only thing we could have done. We could have done something called edge deletion. So here, edge deletion, and I think you probably already know what I'm going to write. Edge deletion. Let's take an example. Maybe let's think of the edge V1 to V2 and let's call that edge E1, this edge right here. Well, let's go ahead and delete that edge. Well, in edge deletion, you do not have to delete vertices because you can just simply remove this edge. And there's no problem in keeping vertex V1 and V2. So what we have is V1, V4 was here, V3, and V2. So all of these edges remain, and that one as well. Whoopsie, that looks a bit funny. That should go there. And this edge has been removed. It seems pretty straightforward. So the way we write this down is we call this G, and then we put sort of a backslash symbol, E1. So we have different notation for when you remove a vertex or when you remove an edge. That'll be important to keep in mind. So the, this graph up here is actually called a vertex deleted subgraph, and the one down here in pink is called an edge deleted subgraph. But in general, you don't have to restrict yourself to just deleting one vertex or deleting one edge. You might re delete many vertices or many edges or a combination of vertices and edges, and the result that you want to think about is actually, in fact, going to be called a subgraph. So in general, let's define a subgraph, and we say it like this. A graph F, and indeed F has to be a graph on its own accord, a graph F is a subgraph, subgraph of a graph G, if these things hold. The vertex set of F is contained in the vertex set of G, and the edge set of F is contained in the edge set of G. Pretty straightforward. And in fact, we use this kind of notation. This is set notation to mean that this set is contained in this, but we can actually say if F is a subgraph, if F is a subgraph of G, we write F contained in G, like this. So we actually use this same sort of notation as we would for sets for the graph, to mean that F is a graph and it's a subgraph of the graph G. And we can actually say, so and we can say 
F is contained in G, or we may say G contains F. All right, so that's just a little bit of terminology and a little bit of notation as well. So if we go back up to this example that we had, we can even consider other types of subgraphs for this one. So let's take this green color, and I'm just going to draw a different kind of subgraph. So here I'm going to remove the vertex V4. So now I only have V2, V1, and V3. So here we are, V1, V2, V3. So when I remove vertex V4, all three of these edges automatically get removed. And then maybe I also remove edge E1, and I'm left with just this. So this is a very strange looking graph, this graph F, but it is indeed a subgraph of this graph because, let's check, its edge set and its vertex set both are subsets of the edge set and vertex set of this graph above it. So even though this graph looks very funny, um, it certainly is a subgraph. It's not connected though because we see V1 is an isolated vertex all on its own over here. So now we've seen several different types of subgraphs and in fact there are sort of special words that we have for particular kinds of subgraphs as well. And let's take a look at the first special word is the word spanning. And what spanning really means is that the subgraph contains all of the vertices of the original graph. So this graph F right here is not spanning because it doesn't have the vertex V4. So now if we look over here at these two examples, we can see that the pink one is spanning and the purple one is not spanning because it's missing a vertex. So in other words, if you want to have a spanning subgraph, you cannot do any vertex deletions. So let's write this down as well. A spanning subgraph, spanning subgraph, is a subgraph obtained only by edge deletions. In other words, the vertex set of the subgraph the subgraph is the entire vertex set of the graph. And I'll call it the original graph. All right, so we saw that example where we had a spanning subgraph. I'll just maybe go back to the example right here. This one was a spanning subgraph because the vertex set of this graph is V1, V2, V3, which is the entire vertex set of this graph over here. Okay, so now sort of the opposite idea is um, a subgraph that can be obtained only by vertex deletions. And let's talk about what that's called. So a subgraph obtained only by vertex deletion is called an induced subgraph. Induced subgraph. So specifically, if we have a graph G, graph G, and the and let's let x x is the set of vertices that have been deleted that are deleted then the resulting subgraph is the resulting subgraph is 
g minus x. So notice that this time we're actually subtracting an entire set of vertices, so possibly more than one. In fact, if we looked at an example, maybe to give us a feeling for it, here is an example graph. I'll just use a different one, maybe five vertices. So here's one, v2, v3, v4, and v5. And I'll draw some edges. Maybe it goes like this with an edge, like that. Okay, so let's suppose that x is the set v1 and v5. All right, so that means that we're removing vertex v1 and v5. So let's just show that right here. We're removing that one and that one. So what we're left with is g minus x, and it looks like vertex v4, vertex v2, vertex v3, and all the edges that go between those vertices which existed in the graph. Of course, I'm not making up brand new ones. These ones are here because they were already in the graph. So normally when we talk about an induced subgraph, we're not actually interested in the vertices that we deleted. We're interested in the vertices that are not deleted. So we are more interested, we're interested in the set of vertices let's call it y, which is really the set of all the vertices with the set x removed. So what we're really concerned about is this set right here. So here we would have y would be equal to v2, v3, and v4, and that's the set we're interested in because that's what remains in our subgraph. So in fact, we often call an induced subgraph based on the ones that remain, not the ones that you take off. So you would actually call this g of y. So you kind of use this notation to mean this is the graph induced by all the vertices that are in y. So this means graph induced by the vertices in y. This is a set y of vertices. And in general, we actually have to keep in mind that the this graph here, this graph, the graph induced by the vertex set y is actually the graph, it's the graph with vertex set y, that should be clear, vertex set y, and edge set the edge set consists consists oops that's funny looking there we are of all edges of g which have both ends both ends in y. So let's take a look at what that really means. Here's the graph g right here, and the set y is the set of vertices v2, v3, v4. So you look at these three vertices, v2, oh sorry, v2 is up here, v3, and v4, and you take a look at all the edges that are in the graph g, and any edge which has both of its ends between any of these vertices, the ones that we're looking at, v2, v3, and v4, those edges stay. Those edges are the ones that stay, and all the other edges you don't care about. So that's basically the idea, and now we understand really why we've called it the induced subgraph. The induced subgraph is named like that because you are talking about a graph that is induced by a particular set of vertices. So we don't really talk about it in terms of what we've removed, we talk about it in terms of what remains. And what remains are a particular set of vertices and all the edges which have both of those ends within that set of vertices. So maybe this was um, a small example and we should take a look at a bigger example to get a better feeling for it. Suppose I ask you, given this same graph, this is the same graph G, we want to find the graph induced by the set Y where Y is equal to V1, V2, V3, and V4. So really all we're doing is removing vertex 5. 
Well, what we would be left with is vertex 1, vertex 2, vertex 3, and vertex 4. And any edge that exists in the graph G, which has both of its ends as one of these, gets to stay. So the edge from V1 to V4 can stay, and also V1 to V2, and also this edge, and also this edge, and also this edge. But that's it. Any vertex out here, which existed in the graph, we cannot include any of its edges. So this is the induced graph on the vertices V1, V2, V3, and V4. Hopefully you see the difference between induced and spanning.